Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday, and that's time for story time with Mr. Adam. It's the beginning of a new year, and we're going to be talking today about the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis. Now, in Pew Packers, if you've been watching those videos, uh, you'll find that this year, beginning now in Pew Packers, we're going to be looking at the book of Genesis and going through the rest of the Old Testament. Now, I really want to coordinate story time with what we're going through in Pew Packers. And so today I have three little books that have to do with the book of Genesis. Now, I think this is really exciting to think about the stories that we find in the Bible and read little books like this one. For example, in Genesis chapter 1 and into chapter 2, it's all about what? Creation. God spoke and this world came into existence. Now, let's read this little book about creation. It says, Right from the start of our world, God was there, even before it began. When he created the planets and stars, he had a marvelous plan. How did he make it? Well, this is how. Nothing was there to begin. Darkness and emptiness flowed all around. God spoke the universe in. Let there be light, God said. It was done. Now there was darkness and light, and God said, It's good. On the very first day, he made the daytime and night. Day two, the waters were split down below. Spaces were made for the skies. Now there was water to drink, air to breathe. All this looked good in God's eyes. God wanted water apart from the land. Dry ground he made on day three. Water was moved to its own special place. And God called the water the sea. God said, let plants appear, let them grow, dropping new seeds as they spread. Greenery sprang in the sea on dry land. It happened just as he said. Let there be lights, God said on the fourth day, keeping the day from the night. God made the sun, moon, and all the stars, and they were good in his sight. God made sea creatures to swim in the vast sea, setting the waters alive. Dolphins and tigerfish, lobsters and whales, all this was part of day five. Then God created the birds of the air, every winged creature to fly, robins and woodpeckers, sparrows and geese, flocking across the sky. Day six, God made all the four-legged beasts, Dogs, camels, zebras, and sheep, all the wild animals, lions, and deer, all the land creatures that creep. Let us make man in our image, God said. All living things he'll command, tending my garden and naming each thing, ruling the sea and the land. And God formed Adam from the dust of the ground, breathing into him his life. God used man's rib to form Eve, because he knew that Adam needed a wife. Day seven, God said his work was all done. He made the day to be blessed. God saw that everything was right and good. Then he decided to rest. It is very important, young people, to remember that this is exactly what the Bible teaches. God spoke and it was done. There was nothing and God made everything, including men and women. And so we need to remember that that's exactly how it happened. No matter what anybody else teaches or tries to teach you, we need to remember that God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, verse 1. Now, this is next book I'm going to read is about an event that I don't think we talk very much about. It's in Genesis chapter 11, and it's called the Tower of Babel. Have you ever wondered why you go to different countries or maybe you just go even to different places here in Midland or around our cities and you hear people speaking different languages? Have you ever wondered why? Do you know that goes back to Genesis chapter 11? And the Bible teaches us about this event. And all of God's people were staying together. All the people that he'd created were all in one place and they didn't want to move. And God created a way for them to move and to spread out and to start multiplying and growing over all the land of the earth. And so this is what we find happening in Genesis chapter 11. The Tower of Babel. 
Pay attention, okay? Long, long ago, God made the whole world so wonderful and so very fine. He wanted the people to obey his word and to praise his holy name divine. God wanted the earth to be full of life. To the people he gave a command, Scatter yourselves in this beautiful world. Have many children. Fill up the land. But the people did not obey the Lord. His order went greatly unheeded. Instead, they met in one place on a plain with all that they thought they had needed. One day, they came up with a great big plan to build a huge city on the plain. Let's make a tower up to the heavens so all the people will know us by name. They stated, the tower will reach the skies. That way we can all stay together. We'll not move away from here, not at all. We'll not leave each other, not ever. So the people made their bricks out of clay. They mixed sticky asphalt for mortar. They worked every day for hours so that the tower would finish much faster. Higher, higher, the tower rose up tall, and the people looked on with great pride. We are making a name for ourselves now with this tower and this city so wide. Then God came down from heaven to see the people's great pride and resistance. They thought they would do things on their own without God's good help and assistance. God saw the people did not have a care for how they'd snubbed orders he'd given. They thought only of the name they would make and how they'd reach God up in heaven. God knew that when the tower was finished, the people would think themselves perfect. If, they, if that happened, they'd never obey him, never adore him, or give him respect. God said, everyone now speaks in one tongue. This aids them in all that they do. Let us perplex and befuddle them, mix up and muddle them, stir their talk so they won't have a clue. Now think about this. The people kept on talking as usual, but their words sounded foreign and odd. When one asked for a hammer, mortar, or brick, the other might just hand him a rod. When the people could not speak to each other, they left city and tower undone. They scattered on the earth as God told them. The proud people were no longer one. They filled up the earth with their families, finally obeying God's good command. For God was still with them. He loved them and forgave them and sent them out to live in the land. The city and the tower were called Babel, because there God confused people's talk. They learned the hard way to obey God's plan, to listen to Him, to walk His walk. The Tower of Babel. Did you know that's how God used, uh, He used that confusing their language to help the people spread out over all the earth. And so now we have all these different languages, but we get to live in all these different places. Now, as you go through the rest of the book of Genesis, you have a man named Abraham, and he had a son whose name was Isaac, and Isaac had a son whose name was Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Not one, but 12 sons. And we have a song about the 12 sons of Jacob, don't we? But one of his most familiar sons is Joseph. And that's the final book I want to read today, because the life of Joseph starts in about Genesis chapter 37 and goes all the way to Genesis chapter 50. That's a lot of chapters that talk about the life of Joseph. And so when we think about Genesis, it's good for us to think about Joseph. He should be one of our very, very favorite Bible characters. All right, Joseph. Joseph was Jacob's favorite son. Jacob gave him a beautiful robe to wear, and this made Joseph's brothers jealous. Joseph had strange and fantastic dreams, but God was with Joseph. God helped Joseph understand his dreams. The dreams made his brothers even more jealous. And one day, Joseph went out to his brothers in the fields. Joseph's brothers saw Joseph coming from a distance. Let's get rid of this little dreamer, the brothers said to themselves. They took his beautiful coat and they planned to kill him. Just then, a caravan of traders came passing by, and the brothers decided to sell Joseph as a slave. So Joseph was taken from his home. Can you imagine that? Then one day, Potiphar's, he went to work for a man named Potiphar. I skipped a page. 
It was terrible to be taken away from home, but God was with Joseph. Joseph became a servant in the house of a man named Potiphar. God blessed Joseph so that he succeeded in everything he did. Soon Joseph became the most important, most trusted servant in his house. One day, Potiphar's wife lied to her husband about Joseph, and Joseph was thrown into prison. But God was still with Joseph, even in prison. The prison warden soon trusted Joseph. He put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners. Joseph once again used his special gift from God. He explained a dream for a servant of Pharaoh. And Joseph said, When you leave prison and are serving the king again, remember me. But the servant forgot about Joseph. Years later, Pharaoh had a strange dream. He dreamed that seven skinny, sick cows ate seven fat, healthy cows grazing near the river. And Pharaoh wondered what his dream meant. And at last, Pharaoh's servant remembered Joseph in prison. God helped Joseph explain Pharaoh's dream. The fat cows meant that there would be seven good years when crops would grow, but the skinny cows meant that there would be seven years of famine that would destroy the land. Pharaoh was pleased with Joseph's wisdom. He put Joseph in charge of the entire land. Only Pharaoh himself ranked higher than Joseph. Joseph stored the crops during the good years. Then when the bad years came, Joseph sold the stored up food to the hungry people. Well, one day Joseph's brothers came to Egypt. The famine had reached their land and they wanted to buy food. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not know him. Joseph gave them grain. He even shared a meal with them. They still did not know him. And finally, he told his family, It's me, Joseph. Soon, Joseph's father, Jacob, came also to Egypt. He was overjoyed to see Joseph again. Joseph forgave his brothers. He said, God was with me. He brought me here so that I could save many people and what you did, God used for good. So the beginning of Genesis starts with creation. God speaking this world into existence and showing his love for us by creating us and this wonderful world to live in. And the book of Genesis ends with Joseph and the life that shows us that God was always with him. Young people, I want to remind you that God is always with you. He loves you. He created you. He created this world for you to live in. And so as you go about today looking at the birds and everything outside and your home and your family, I want you to remember that God is always with you and he loves you. Thank you for being with me today. I'm glad we could spend this time together. Let us think about God and all of his wonderful love and blessings as we go through our day, okay? All right. I'll see you next time. Lord willing, you guys be good and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.